Today I'm going to demonstrate measuring a customer. I'm going to demonstrate the way I measure customers because every bootmaker seems to do it differently and that's okay as long as you know what to do with the measurements you've taken the way you've taken them then you're okay. But I'm going to show you the way I do it. The first thing I do, I've got my measuring portfolio here and I measure on legal size paper and the first thing I do is date the paper actually I think today's the 25th and I write the customer's name and then this is my husband so I know where he lives but I would give it to the customer and have them write their there's a space for their address, phone numbers, email and it's easier to just have them fill that out than dictate to me so I would hand it to him and have him fill that out and then every single piece of paper that has his information on it would have his name and the date because sometimes you have a customer come in and need to be remeasured for some reason or they'll be your customer for several years and after a while you want to remeasure so always date it so you know what the most current measurement is okay what I want you to do first is sit back in your chair cross your right foot over at the knee like a lady you have to tell guys like a lady otherwise they tend to put their their foot up on their knee like that. I don't know if this is in camera range, so let let me check the camera real quick. Okay, let's move this out. So I measure with the customer seated, weight off, and their legs crossed. And the way I write down my measurements I have two columns with each measurement that I'm going to take and I don't think of this as the left hand column and this is the right hand column I measure the right foot first always so the right foot goes in the first column and the left foot goes in the second column that's what works for me okay so I start out, just relax your foot. I start out by measuring the ball area. And if you, you kind of run your finger right underneath the edge of the foot, it's easier to find the correct bones to help you know where to measure. There's a bone here and here to measure the ball. And then if you feel down under the foot, you want these two bones to measure the instep. There's one right under here and right here. So I'm going to start with the ball. I can out the video the mirror over there. Yeah, that was a good shot. Really? Yeah. And usually what I do is just kind of pull it snug, get it where I want it, and pull it snug, make sure it's on the correct bones, and then just kind of let it relax. Not completely. I want the slightest bit of tension on it. It's not just completely falling off, but at the same time it's not tight. It's just sitting on there with the absolute slightest bit of tension. And I was taught to always measure in eighths. I know a lot of shoemakers and bootmakers use centimeters, but I measure in inches and I use eighths. So he is nine and two eighths. And for some reason, I was also taught to always leave it in eights. It's not nine and a quarter, it's nine and two eighths. Okay, the waist is that, that narrow area right behind the ball. All the bones in the waist are running this way, so you can squeeze them just a hair in the waist. And that's an important measurement for cowboy boots because there's no way that they can lace it down or cinch it up tighter once they get into it. It has to fit correctly. But you can't squeeze them in the ball, you can't squeeze them over the instep because that will cause pain. So the waist is the area where you can fit them a little bit snugger and create that, that beautiful hourglass shape and also kind of hold them in place within the boot. So I've got that. So for that, I'm going to put, he's just a little over 9 and an eighth, so I'm just going to put 9 and an eighth plus. That means another sixteenth, plus or minus. And 
when I fit the last, I pretty much keep the, the measurements I've taken from the ball and the instep. I don't change too much, but um, the waist, I will subtract a quarter of an inch because it, you, you can do that and it won't cause discomfort and that really creates that snug fit. So is that normal for the waist and the ball to have that close of a measurement? Sometimes they're, sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're way different. Or is there not a normal foot? <laughs> there's, there's not a normal. So now I'm making sure my, my tape is right over those two bones. Write down that measurement. I've got 10 and 3 eighths there. Do you remember when I first started wearing cowboy boots and we had other people make them before you started making mine? They would always, that yeah. measurement right there would turn some people, red in like two minutes. Yep. Some people, like my husband here, has a big old bony bump right there. You won't have any problem finding their instep. And that means that you need to mark that on your, on your form and make a note of it when you fit the last. I take this measurement, this is kind of a mixture of the waist and the instep. I'm going over the waist here, but I'm going up over that instep bone. And now I'm going to take one that's, that bone is here, I'm right behind it in that there's a soft hollow spot right behind it. I'm going to go there and right up here at the narrowest part of the ankle, right where the ankle joins the, the foot. And this is an important measurement here. The heel measurement. This determines whether or not they can actually get their foot into the boot. So this is the narrowest part of the heel, of the ankle, and the widest part of the heel. And then I'm not sure that the, the cameras can capture it, but what I would do now is have him put this foot, foot flat on the surface. I would measure up from the surface, up his leg to the fullest part of his calf and measure right around his calf at that fullest part and then I would make a note whether I measured up 14 inches or 13 or 15 or whatever and that way I know exactly where the fullest part of his calf is. Okay, let me adjust the camera. So that's where and how I take measurements. Now what I would do Go ahead and raise that foot. We'll do a tracing of this foot. Okay, I want his leg straight up and down. And at this point, I just kind of feel his foot, see if he's got hammer toes or that big bony bump or anything unnatural. And then I would ask him if he has any fitting issues. Yeah, I do. My last bootmaker. Be quiet. <laughs> Before you. <laughs> yeah. I always, see I'm making a little scribble here. I always do that right before I go around the little toe because you can clip the, the big toe to some degree without really affecting their, the fit at all. But you do not want to clip that little toe. They need room for their little toe. And so if you'll just make that, you'll know exactly where it is. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna feel for those bones again and I'm going to indicate them on my tracing so I know exactly where I measured him. What do you mean by clipping? Just um, make it, make the insole a little smaller than where the imprint of the toe shows. And then I'm gonna put my thumb here and put my, my middle finger right underneath it and mark right under my middle finger and that should show me about where the, the instep is on his foot. Now you'll notice I'm using a tiny short little pencil. That is not because there's a pencil shortage in my shop. It's because 
I, if I used a tall pencil, I might be deflected by his ankle bones, so I'm using a really short one, and I'm trying to hold it very straight up and down. All right, got that one measured. You can take it off. Okay, now I do a size stick. Make sure you tell your customers you don't use this to choose the size of their last because they will just really have problems if they measure a 10 and but they always buy a 9 or an 11 or whatever. And I don't use this to choose their, their last. The only thing I use this for is to see if one foot is longer or shorter than the other one. I'm going to use the measurements I just took and the pedograph, which I'll do in a minute, to tell me what size last I want to use. This only tells me if one foot is longer or shorter. So make sure customers know that. Or better yet, don't let them, even let them see what size they are. Okay, I'm going to move this towards you slowly. I want you to tell me when you feel this, touch your toe. Yep. All right, take your foot out. Okay, so he's measured right out of 10. So I'm a 10, I always wear a nine and a half. <laughs> see, what did I tell you? So I'm going to write down that he's a size 10, and then if I measured his other foot, it might be a 10 and a half. Or you a set yourself half or up whatever. for that one. Yeah. <laughs> I know it. Okay, so now I'm going to take the pedograph. I'm going to write his name on the piece of paper and the date. Then it will never, ever get confused with any other measurements I've taken for him or someone else's pedograph. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to do this right here where, I, where I've measured him. But under normal circumstances, I always do the pedograph on the floor next to a wall or a display case. I have found that I, if I do this with nothing around, people tend to grab my head for balance, and I don't like that. So I like to do it next to something that they can hold on to for balance. This is a pedograph. It's a device for capturing the footprint. This a bottle of ink, and I modified this roller so it would fit in my handy dandy little plastic case, but the modification means that it falls apart sometimes. So I'm just going to squish that ink out. Now flip that down. So now my, my ink surface is, is underneath, and when he stands on it, it's going to make an imprint of his foot. Okay, now, don't even. Okay, now what I want you to do is stand up with, yes, with your left foot right in the center of the blue. I think I've done yoga, and I don't have to grab your head. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to have you slowly lower your right foot straight down. Now stand evenly balanced. Perfect. 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 I know, I know. <laughs> have them have both shoes off, obviously. Now straight up and over. You can sit down. And there we go. There's his pedograph. I use the pedograph so much for telling me how to shape the bottom of the last and how the insole needs to be shaped. So there we go. I have just so measured successfully. That show measured I have Dale. an arch. Yes, Dale has a nice arch in here. So you can tell a lot about the customer. Between the pedograph and the tracing and the measurement, you've got pretty much all the information you need to properly fit a customer.